Hello and welcome to Catalyze Music Academy. My name is at Chris there. I'm an Ableton certified trainer. And today I want to review yet another Max for Live device, it's something I've been doing on the channel a bit recently, and I think it's really fun. And I'll talk about another one of just like the all time greats, just Max for Live devices that you just need to know. And today I want to talk a little bit about the Buffer Shuffler 2.0. Uh, this thing is basically a multi effects sequencer. Uh, that is just amazing and can do lots of stuff and can really just glitch things out. So I'm talk about that, what it does and how you can use it. Before we dive into that, I do want to let you know if you are enjoying the content on the channel, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, all that kind of stuff, all the YouTube things. I greatly appreciate it. So I had uh, somebody ask me about, about this on stream recently, and I hadn't used this in a while and I've been using it for a long time. And it made me just really appreciate how cool this effect is and just people need to know about this. So number one, uh, this is available in the Max for Live Essentials pack. This is a free pack if you own the suite version of Ableton Live. And if you go on to Max Audio, Audio Effect and then Buffer Shuffler, there it is, Buffer Shuffler 2.0. There is also a 1.0 version that I believe is in the M4L, the Max for Live Big 3 pack. Um, this is the older version here. You can try it if you want, but the newer version is better. Um, but the Max for Live Essentials pack is what you're looking for. So uh, we're going to take this and we're going to toss this on this drum beat. I got some drums and some percussion going on. There's my drum beat. And uh, we're going to take this, run it through the buffer shuffler. So the buffer shuffler is called that because it basically creates a buffer. So it's basically going to take a recording of the audio that runs through it, and it's going to allow you to process it in lots of different ways. So one thing you may notice is that as you are changing things the, and you hit play, the first time you hit play, you will not get the effect, but then as it starts looping, you will actually hear the effect there. So uh, we're going to have a bunch of different effects here. We basically have uh, a sequencer here that allows us to control things like the order of our clip. Uh, we can use a stutter for doing like beat repeat stutter effects. We have a gate for turning off different parts of it. We have a pitch control. We have a shift control, a volume control, and a panning control. So these are all happening simultaneously and parallel. So you can start laying together and mixing and matching different effects together. So we're going to start with this first one over here. Um, this is our sequencer that allows us to adjust the order in which we're hearing our sound. So you can see this goes up sequentially. So this automatically slices it based off of the number of steps that you have. And you can adjust the steps manually here to add more or less steps. Or you can hit these buttons to get 16, 32, or 8 automatically. So we're going to run this through. And I'm just going to start moving these around a little bit. And you're going to hear that it's going to start jumping around to different parts of my clip. So it's allowing me to basically change the order of what's happening. I can also, this will probably sound even cooler if I switch this down to 16th notes and I start adjusting this around, uh, it'll sound a little cooler, I think. So already I can get like some cool glitchy edits out of pretty much anything I want just by just like clicking and dragging these around and kind of seeing what comes up with it. Uh, so that's just changing the order of the sounds, basically automatically slicing and allowing you to adjust this very kind of like old school style sampling and adjusting, moving things around. If you're familiar with like drum and bass or like any kind of like that kind of style sampling, great for just changing up the order of a drum beat. Also down here, we have the play modes. And so this can be adjusted separately from these controls here. If the arrow is pointing forward, it's just going to play it normally. If I hit this button, it's going to play this particular slice in reverse. And so let's try a couple of these. So you can just reverse things. Sounds really cool. I'll try it out on the eighth notes just so you can kind of hear it a little easier. We'll do something pretty normal, just kind of normal. And then if I hit it again, after I've hit it once, it makes a little X, which means it just won't play it. So you can basically mute certain slices. So again, really cool, really easy just to like start slicing things up, moving them around, uh, make them sound really, really interesting. Uh, on top of that, we can adjust like we can randomize things just by hitting the dice button and that will randomize it. Which can be really fun. 
uh, we can adjust the number of rows and move them up and down from each other, left and right. So like adjust the whole sequence in either direction. Really fun, really kind of like easy ways to just get lots of cool things out of your clip. So that's the first part. That's just one of many things we can do here. We can also go into stutter. This is essentially going to be like a beat repeat where the higher the blue bar is here, the more repeats you're gonna get. So it's gonna be a very fast repeat. This is just gonna be uh, double. So super cool. We can also turn on and off our different layers individually by hitting these blue buttons over here. So sounds pretty cool. Do some again, more kind of like glitchy B repeat kind of stuff. We'll leave a couple of those in there for right now. Actually, we'll turn those off. Uh, then we have a gate. This allows us to basically mute uh, different parts of our clip. So pretty straightforward. Just allows you to mute things. Then we have a pitch control. This will allow us to pitch it up and down in either direction. Uh, the ranges right now are set to negative 12 and plus 12. And so each one of these is going to be about three semitones. And you can actually see the value over here. So if I turn this up here, you can see the value is three, six, nine, then 12. So it's not one semitone per step, although you could set it up to do that if you wanted to. So I can just click and drag in here, pitch things up and down. So sounds pretty cool. Uh, we also have a shift over here. The, this is going to be kind of similar, except for it's going to, instead of pitching you up and down in semitones, it's going to pitch you up in hertz. And we have a minimum and maximum amount here. So it's going to be, this is going to be a thousand hertz up. This is going to be somewhere in between. Uh, so this will sound different. It's like a different kind of pitching. We can adjust the maximum range here to make it not quite as obvious. And of course, we can like mix and match all these together. Sounds pretty cool. Uh, amplitude here is just gonna be a volume control, so we can you know fade things out. Pretty straightforward. Uh, and then we have panning here, which also kind of self-explanatory. This is gonna pan it to uh, the uh, right side. This is gonna pan it to the left side. Switch it up and down. Uh, get some like cool weird glitchy stuff by mixing and matching all of these together and of course we can randomize all of them uh, we can control all the details we want we can make it super chaotic we can make it really simple uh, and then we have a few basic controls over here we have like a bypass control that turns it off or a dry wet control we can get different amounts here I also really like this freeze button uh, this freeze button will kind of like freeze based off of whenever you hit it it'll basically take the settings from that sequence. So uh, even more ways to get more kind of like glitchy things out of it. Uh, and then you can save up to 10 different patterns in here to just create lots of combinations. And then if you're performing live, you could MIDI map all of these to be able to switch back and forth between different presets of weird kind of like glitchy effects. So. Uh, that's kind of it. That's really the idea here. It works really great on percussion, works great on drum beats, can be really fun on melodies if you like just grabbed a sample from like your sample library and it's just like a boring generic sample library melody. Run it through this, glitch it out, make it sound kind of like crazy and interesting, and then boom, you have something that's really kind of cool. So really, really fun effect. Just use it. Just try it out. Um, regardless of the kind of music you're making, if you're like looking just to get a little bit of strange weirdness out of any just pre-made loop. This is fantastic. It's really easy to use once you kind of like wrap your head around what's happening here and all these things are happening at the same time. Uh, just fantastic effect. I'm a big fan and I'm gonna start using this more again. I haven't used this for a while and just like going through it and playing around with it. It always sounds cool. You always get at least something decent out of it uh, if you're into glitchy weird things like I am. So uh, that's it for the Buffer Shuffler 2.0. Hopefully you enjoyed watching that. Uh, if you have been using this and you like using it or you're tried out, uh, let me know how it goes. I'd love to hear what your experience is. Is, is this 
a cool effect for you? Is this something you use all the time? Is it not something you use all the time? Um, try it out for yourself, see what you think, and let me know. But that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed watching that. Uh, thanks for watching it, and I will see you again in another video.